What is a movie cliche that you never really see? Turning the TV onto the correct channel at exactly the right moment to catch a relevant, potentially life-changing news broadcast from the very beginning. Link. People turning the water on in a shower while standing directly under it. I recall reading in a Skreddit thread or something similar where someone mentioned their so only took baths and refused to take showers, and months later finally asked why, and it was because they didn't like standing under the freezing water waiting for it to get warm. The thread evolved into a surprising amount of people realizing that they do this, and it never occurred to them to just let the water run before getting into the shower. So, I'm not sure it's as uncommon as this comment is suggesting. Edit, never expected this comment to get as much traction as the one I mentioned. Person A, how do I know that I can trust you? Person B, you don't. Person A immediately proceeds to trust person B. This is my favorite one, because it's so true. I can even hear it in my head, the music playing in the background as person B smolders after delivering that line as person A gives them a knowing look of trust. Seriously doubt that black market arms dealers and terrorists conduct 90% of their business in the middle of a club full of strangers with techno music blaring. Quietly, as to not cause suspicion, he'll have the AK-47. Arms dealer, can't hear ya lad, hype up, I said, he'll have the AK-47. Nightclub scene stops. Getting knocked out cold, and being perfectly fine. Being knocked out long enough for someone to drive you to another location. You would have some serious brain damage if you were knocked out for that long. I can explain. Minus 30 minutes later, still hasn't explained. Or the alternative, where the whole problem could be done and over with after an explanation, but the other party just makes a big fuss and huge assumptions and never gives an option to explain. No one ever wants to give their partner the benefit of the doubt. So many characters get caught doing something seemingly suspicious that could be explained slash justified by giving context. But, of course, no one wants to take the 10 seconds to hear it. Or, they instantly jump to the worst conclusion. Eventually everything comes together, and they realize they're so never did anything wrong. Apologize and their so instantly takes them back, despite them clearly having no trust in their so. People fucking and then rolling over and going to sleep. Do people actually just let it ooze out and then sleep in a wet spot all night? The eloquent poetry of that question. People taking like 20 stronger punches right on the chin like nothing. Adding to this, fighting lots of people in a short time frame in general. Even if you don't take any punches, fighting is very physically demanding. Unless you train and fight at a professional level, you'd be gassed well before the end of the house fight sequence from the first John Wick movie. Asking someone out on a date, saying pick you up a date, then just leaving, no question on where the fuck they live, or where they'll pick them up from. Sure thing, I'll whatsapp you my zip code, oh yeah yeah, I am. Definitely have no idea where you live already, asterisk p-o-s-t-c-o-d-e. No matter what crowded city or time of day it is, there will always be an open parking spot right exactly in front of, wherever they are driving to. Dude, one time I got the parking spot at Costco, that was closest to the entrance. Was a one in a million. Edit, photo parking spot, http, imga.com, slash gallery, slash, 8lml obdi. I don't think I've ever seen one person miss a basketball shot in a movie, ever, except in basketball movies. They certainly don't have anyone like me in movies. Takes a shot, misses and catches the rebound, 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 repeat another 20 times before finally getting it in. A bedroom full of lit candles during sex. Uh, talk dirty to me. Me. You like that. Why? Fire alarm. Asterisk HAS a fucking CONNIPTION asterisk. When two characters get out of a car and one says so what are we doing here? Where are we? Or what's the plan? As if they didn't just have the entire car ride to discuss this. I've never had a friend say I'll explain later. And then sit silently in traffic until we get there, and then okay so here the deal. 
one of the many great things in Zwegas. They get all excited to go to Vegas, exclaiming, Vegas baby, and then you get the shots in the car along the way, where they look super bored, Vince Vaughn meekly mumbling, Vegas baby, trying to stay hyped during the hours long car ride. I was a chef for 20 years. I waited 20 years for someone to say, you're bleeding, one often is in the kitchen, just so I could reply, I ain't got time to bleed, quote from predator, it never happened, you're bleeding. No smoke when there is fire. Your handgun has 52 bullets before reloading. And you can get shot anywhere, and then just walk away, and deal with it later. I guess Op is asking for movie cliches, that never happen in real life. But there actually are some classic movie cliches, that somehow became cliches, while almost never actually being used in any movies. The two that immediately come to mind, are the bandit tying the damsel to a train track was only used in a couple of very obscure early silent shorts, and Mr. is where it turns out the butler did it, has been used ironically a few times but someone did a survey once and only turned up one minor Agatha Christie novel that used this trope earnestly. I also had a student ask me once which movie it was that started the cliche of a private eye sitting at his desk with a bottle of hooch, when a dame walks in who looked like trouble, and was shocked, when I realized I couldn't name a single movie. That actually begins that way in earnest, though, again, it's been used ironically a few times. Incidentally, I don't think any of those cliches ever happen much in real life either, so double whammy. 19 year old part timer at a fast food restaurant, living by themselves in a luxurious two bedroom apartment downtown in a major city. This one seems realistic, I've seen house hunters. Mike is a dandelion farmer and Jill is a part time yoga instructor, their budget is 1.7 million dollars. There's no time to explain, well, I mean, in the same time it took to say that, you could have said, there's a man chasing after me, or, we have to get to the hospital, or literally any other simple phrase that gives a general idea, of what the hell is happening. This is so fucking true. Like even a half-assed explanation is better than nothing. In every emergency I've ever been in I've never once said, there's no time to explain, like I'd say at least, we need to call an ambulance, so and so is hurt, or, I need to leave, I'm feeling really scared. The, meet cute, where two folks bump into each other at the grocery store and end up chatting, then dating, then breaking up over a misunderstanding, then getting back together. A room full of 5 plus people, that have a conversation that flows perfectly, and isn't just people constantly talking over each other. I love that always Sunny doesn't follow this rule. The, nerdy, girl letting her hair down and suddenly becoming hot. Someone who stalks their crush, and not only doesn't wind up on the wrong side of an arrest warrant and or a restraining order, but actually gets into a relationship with that person, who clearly doesn't think they are a creep. Onion headline a while back, local man arrested for romantic comedy behavior. If somebody accidentally misspeaks, or fumbles over their words in a movie or TV show, it always is of great importance, and characters always just read way more into dialogue than people do in real life. World's going to explode in 5 minutes, uses 3 minutes of it to give a speech asterisk. I hate it when this happens. When someone breaks a dish or wine glass and immediately cuts themselves, while trying to clean it up, most of time they are crying while doing this. I mean, come on. Or, lighting an old picture or letter on fire, and then just casually dropping it into a waste basket. When I was in high school I lit a break up letter on fire and dramatically dropped it into the bin at home. Then the fire alarm went off, and I got in so much trouble. You're about to go on stage in front of many people you're nervous and kind of mess up for whatever reason. Like you touch the mic, and it makes that obnoxious loud sound. The crowd may start booing then however you perform brilliantly, like you didn't just embarrass yourself in front of 200 people. And when you're done, someone starts clapping slowly, and then everyone joins. You win the competition and get to go out with your crush. Mick gives feedback, when you first speak into it, then works perfectly for the rest of the performance. Also your voice sounds angelic and flawless, almost like it was pre-recorded. I'm trying to get in shape. I would really prefer a 3 minute montage instead of the way I'm doing it right now. 
I love Sons of Anarchy, but one thing always bugged me about it. Motorcycle chase scenes with old Impalas or similar vehicles. Even larger motorcycles can accelerate, and corner much better than a car from the 70s. People hanging up the phone without saying goodbye. You've obviously never talked to an Irish grandmother on the phone. My mum calls her back just to say bye mum. Food fights. Having a table full of breakfast in the morning, and taking only a strip of bacon in a rush to school slash work. Yeah if my parents ever made me something like that, when I was at school I'd just be late to school, fuck that. Physical bullying in high school, like throwing drinks, stuffing people in lockers, etc. Maybe it's my school, but bullying is almost always psychological. Rumors, mean comments and jokes, and exclusions. I went to 5 different schools. There was some bullying, but I've only been physically touched once, and never really heard of anyone getting physical. Kids are just dicks with their words. A woman giving birth to an obviously 6 month old baby. That one's probably for cost reasons. People having a complex conversation in the corner of a nightclub or music performance, where they're not shouting at the top of their lungs, just to get out a few monosyllabic words. Setting fire to petrol, by flicking a lit cigarette in a pool of it on the ground. Yeah especially if it's jet fuel. Jet fuel is very difficult to ignite, and doesn't really explode like in Die Hard 2. Bit of a curveball, but my girlfriend always points out how, if someone leaves a voice email where they say how much they love their girlfriend slash wife slash husband etc, then they are basically dying in the next scene. I'm now terrified of leaving her voice emails. A certain voice email from Dexter haunts my dreams. Everyone is super attractive. Unless you're a non-essential character or terrible person the audience is supposed to hate. Interrupting a wedding. A group of people walking to an edge of a cliff to reveal a great vista, and beyond yonder they're the city or monument, or crashed spaceship, evil fortress etc, that they have to get to. Next scenes. They are at the damn place. They are not tired dirty, hungry, somehow they cover days of traveling without breaking a sweat. The rag leaders, duh. Somebody pulls the fire alarm and all the sprinklers go off. Pool on the roof, must have a leak. In reality, fire sprinklers will only activate if they get hot, usually around 135 deg point f slash 57 deg point c, and only the ones that get hot will turn on. Also the water inside is usually the most foul, rusty, greasy mess that you really wouldn't want to get drenched in. I really really hate that cliche, so much, sprinklers are basically there, to save the damn building from burning down. The ugly kid just needed a haircut and contacts. The slow clap. I've used the slow clap on occasion. House parties with a good girl, guy ratio. The amount of stuff that happens in a 24 hour period in teen rom-coms like, can't hardly wait, and, dazed and confused. Dazed and confused, isn't inaccurate in small towns. I'm in a small point town in the bible belt, and high school, and adult life, is basically drive around doing random shit, before getting high with friends. You'd do anything to kill the boredom. Shopping cart jousting at 1am included. People enjoying sex in the shower, it is really just taking turns at being cold, and having the wrong lubricant. The old the bell doesn't dismiss you, I dismiss you that teachers say. I'll explain, in the movies every time there's a scene in a classroom, the bell rings and all of a sudden all the students stand up and loudly exit the room. With the teacher screaming the homework assignment for the next day on top of their noise, doesn't happen in real life. Usually teachers check the time, and make sure their lesson is wrapped up on time. But if they don't, they dismiss the students, not the bell. Maybe an extremely small minority of inefficient teachers actually behave like in the movies. I've never seen it, but it's a 100% of the time in the movies. Edit, I'm not saying it never happens. You of course have your inefficient teachers out there, but it's rare. But somehow it always happens in every movie. People talking in a small group about someone, a hush falls over the group, then the actor asks, he's standing behind me, isn't he? This actually happened to me, I was in a small cafe in my hometown, and came across some acquaintances from high school. Conversation eventually changes to be about some guy, that had beef with me, 
I was all like, but he's in jail which was the rumor I had been hearing. The guy I was taking to shifted his eyes, to focus right behind me.